do it with no hands Watch me twerk it for your man cause he throw hella bands He like it when I'm on the pole, I do it with no hands I'm getting money, other bitches, they don't stand a chance Twerk, twerk for them dollars, I don't want your man You know it's Jenny Gang, still winning, ain't shit changed I'm in the muscle car, you see me in the fast lane You know I do my thing, 20 years Brian and Edwin Pata were brothers through and through. Just a typical little brother that was funny, entertaining, uh, high energy. Even rivals on the football team. This photo was the last time the two saw one another playing each other in the 2006 Florida State Miami game. Edwin says even then he felt yeah. something was off. And I remember hugging him and I, I told him, I said, I can't feel you feel like you're distant from me. Two months later, Brian Pata, a star defensive lineman for the University of Miami with dreams of playing in the NFL, was murdered. I wish I was there to protect him and be there for him, um, for him to die like that, alone like that. Investigators believe the killer was Pata's own teammate. Jones is accused of shooting Pata to death outside his Kendall apartment complex. Jones and Pata had some bad blood at one point getting into a fist fight. While Jones was suspected, it would be 15 years before Jones was arrested last week. Yo, Jenny Gang, what it do? Can't figure out if that's straight or not, but gotta get a new ring light. So we are back with another Jenny Gang production. Before I say another word, please go ahead and hit the like button so my videos can move through YouTube's algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to all of the current Jenny Gang. Thank you for subscribing. So, for starters, I am starting a um, online boutique, and I am wearing one of my uh, new pieces of merch. It's called the Get Rich or Die Trying Money Roll. So, um, I will drop the Instagram link somewhere on the video in the comments or whatever i do have a launch date that i am not mentioning yet because i want to make absolute sure that um me and the website lady you know what i'm saying are on the same page with the date so yeah make sure y'all tune into that so today we're going to talk about a few things but the case we're going to talk about is definitely a horror story, but I'm going to call it a case, is a guy named Brian Pata, okay? So instead of me prolonging doing these cases, y'all know I tell y'all I might read some of them. And this case came to my phone a few days ago. It's a very interesting case to me, but let me just still read and give y'all the details. Okay, so Brian Sidney Pata was an all-American football defensive lineman for the Miami Hurricanes and was majoring in criminology. Go figure. After leaving football practice during his fourth year at school, Brian Pata was murdered. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about Brian, okay? Brian was actually good at football. Um, what they said was that in a few weeks, he was actually probably going to be drafted by the NFL, okay? So, naturally, I'm not sure how many of his other teammates were even being looked at like that, but since he was, I'll say that probably created a little bit of jealousy for some people who, you know, weren't going to be able to take their football career to the next level, possibly. Um, also, let's talk about some other things about Brian that weren't so good. To me, he seemed like a, a little bit of a kind man. That's why I thought it was very um, ironic that he was in school for criminology. But when Brian was murdered, the um, police had to try to do like background checks and see like who he's wrong and stuff like that. So they looked into a jealous ex-girlfriend who was like kind of like breaking down when he passed away, but see, he was talking to more than one girl, so it's kind of like a little rivalry going on with them. Um, also, that one of those girlfriends had a brother that had a crazy past. They want to make sure he didn't take him out. Um, he sold a car on eBay that was a lemon. They caught up with the person that he sold it to, try to investigate, see if they'd done it. And he done a few other things that wasn't so honorable. But as far as football, Brian Pata was that dude, obviously. 
So what makes this case so interesting to me, and everything, this all happened like in 2006, y'all. The parents felt like the police weren't working on this case. They weren't doing anything. So every time they asked them, they had mainly progress or oh, all oh, this and that, right? So finally, one day they asked like, the Sarge or somebody, you know, like a little bit higher ranks. And he says, actually, we are working on an arrest for the Brian Fatsa murder. So that kind of surprised everybody like, what? You mean you, you got somebody or whatever? So he played football, he had teammates and there's actually a photo of him and his teammates that was taken prior to him being killed. So let me tell y'all why I wanna talk about this story so in depth. The guy who they suspect of killing him, which, you know, I think they know for sure that he did, is actually in the photo with Ryan. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, that's just phony to me. I don't even know if they were beeping at this time, but I think that they were based on the first video that I had watched. But what is that, 15 years? He's been walking around free and acting like he's grieving or whatever. And he's the one that killed the boy. So let's let's look up his name. I think it's Rashawn's, I'm sorry, his name was Rashawn Jones. Rashawn Trayvon Jones, which he's 35 now, but basically um brian pulled into his apartment complex on the night that he was taken out and someone shot him in the head he was 22 he died on the scene as a result of the shooting so the police sometimes they be knowing stuff like early when something happens to somebody but they don't have enough evidence or everything just don't fit right but this is what happened y'all Brian, the the one who was uh, murdered, and Rashawn had had ongoing issues about a girl. So Rashawn was dating somebody that Brian used to date, some girl named Jada, right? So of course, they're on the same football team. Um, it's already a lot of male ego. Then like I said, um, Brian, actually he was nine months away from being selected um, in the NFL. So that probably brought a little jealousy on from the other dude. And the other dude actually was a hothead too. He threatened like other teammates. And I don't know why it took them this long to know this, but the the little firearm that Rashawn was always threatening people with, the bullet matched the bullet that they found in Brian's, you know what I'm saying, at the scene. So, um, Two months prior to what happened to Brian, he told his brother that Rashawn had um, threatened to shoot him in the... Basically, he actually told him what he was going to do. So y'all know what happened. Rashawn sat there, let it fester, really convinced himself to go ahead and do that to Brian, and he actually did it. And when he told his brother that, his brother was like, um, you need to tell somebody, you need to tell the coach. But I'm pretty sure Brian didn't say anything because of one, again, male ego is a very serious thing. And then two, when somebody says something like that to you, you might believe them and you might be like, this person crazy, but you don't really think they going, you know what I'm saying, do that to you. So the evidence now, again, with the bullet, um, Rashawn's original alibi is that he was home all night. Now they done matched up the cell phone that he had to um, the towers near where Brian stayed. Also, um, after everything happened, they called an emergency meeting for all of the team, right? And players, coaches, staff members, etc. Well, Rashawn was the only player that didn't show up for this meeting. And then after the meeting, he called one of his teammates asking to borrow for money. He didn't say nothing about why he needed the money. And he also did not say like, Oh, yeah, I ain't come to the meeting because, and like the friend asked him, but he really didn't have a reason why he wasn't at the meeting. You know what I'm saying? So he was interviewed twice, but told investigators he was at home. Obviously, that wasn't true. And an eyewitness actually identified this dude twice, okay? 
like I said, this dude should have been in jail. His family is relieved that something is happening um, about what happened to him. But at the same time, Rashawn done got to live an extra 15 years out here walking around free. Not to mention, again, he's a hothead, so I ain't gonna tell him who else he done roughed up or done something to in that time. So, of course, he's denying it. He's saying it's not true or or whatever. And, yeah. Ryan was Haitian, too. I actually meant to mention that. But talking about that case and just talking about how those two were on a team together and he was killed nobody knew and actually y'all the picture that i was talking about the picture i'm referring to i'm gonna post two of them i believe rashawn and the rest of the teammates were actually standing in the picture and they have what we call a maybe a mural we got one from my brother too so i called it um i call it a banner but they call it a mural so they had a picture of brian's uh, face on the football field and all the teammates gathered around beside it. So y'all know now that they done found out he did it, they circling him on the picture gathered around Brian's photo after he done, he the one that killed the boy. That being said, not, it sounds like those two weren't really friends, but they kind of had to be cordial because they played on a team together. I just want to say that during my time of bereavement, you know what I'm saying, which is gonna go on till I don't know when. Um, not bereavement, but you know, dealing with everything that happened with my brother, the the initial feelings, the confusion, you know, all of that. There were a lot of things that were shown to me by the universe during that time. People I might have trusted, people I might have respected. People maybe that I didn't care about one way or the other, but you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of things that have happened that kind of make me feel like this situation. Like, them efforts be real fake out here. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the things that I found out, I should have probably already known, but I be trying to see the good in people when I fool with them. And also, any things that people do to me that I would never do to them. So, when it hits you, you be, like, even more pissed off as you, like, bro, I could have did that to you ten times, but I didn't. Um, been known that money is the root of all evil. You know what I'm saying? But we all need it. We all want it. And America is a, what do you call it, capitalistic country where you, you gotta have money that ain't no problem with that but i found out that there are people in this world that i was associated with that literally take every dollar that comes to them i i don't agree with that even if you, let's say you're a hustler out on the streets, right? And you moving your work or whatever. You should not take every sale that come to you. You know why? Even though you might not be able to tell, somebody to sell you something might be an undercover. Somebody might sell you something and they a jack boy. Somebody might sell you something and he got the, the product that's got the products in it that's going to hurt your clientele and then you're going to get in trouble for that. As a dancer, I also feel like you should not take every dollar that comes to you. Sorry. Whatever fills you in, all money is not good money. But like I said, during my time of being off and dealing, you know, with everything that happened with my brother, I found out a lot about a lot of people. And needless to say, it's straight. I've always been blessed and highly favored. But... I have changed the way I treat some people. I have taken some people, like they was on a pedestal right here. I done brought them down here where they belong. You know what I'm saying? And that's just that. I ain't even, I'm not really complaining. I'm simply saying, you gotta always, you can't put nothing past nobody, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And for this situation, 
I just kind of feel like it's it's really kind of the same thing. Like this dude is walking around, living normal. You know what I'm saying? Still playing on the team and all along he had done killed this boy. Everybody else grieving, sad. His family don't know what's going on. He was getting ready to, like I say, his family was Haitian. He get ready to start supporting his family in a major way, the NFL. And this dude just selfishly took him out, you know? And everybody else thought he was cool and thought he was grieving and upset just like them. And he ain't give two Fs about it. I do not fool with Hassan Campbell. Let's make that very clear. And if, it's okay if you do. But one thing he's constantly saying, pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. And that is the realest, some of the realest ish ever wrote. So let me know what y'all think about the case. Like I said, I thought the case was very interesting. I thought it was very conniving how Rashawn been walking around living his dang on life all this time. Probably got kids, a wife, and then not even trying to, he has no conscience about it because a lot of these cases that I watch on YouTube, when they be done found the killer like 15, 20 years later, the, sometimes the killer, they be like, they be like kind of not relieved that they're getting caught, but it been done been on their mind and their heart, their conscience so long that they tired of fighting. They ready to do their time and you know, their debt to what they've done to the other person. This fool still up here lying and nine and with all of the evidence is pointing to him. So he's the lowest snake in the grass, how they come. But it's a lot of y'all out here just like him. So let me know what y'all think about the case. Need y'all to like, share, um, subscribe, and comment on my commentary. Keep it respectful though. I don't mind adverse opinions, but we don't do trolls because the energy is, is good over here. Um, my new clothing line that I am dropping, or boutique, I hate to say clothing line because I feel like that means you, you know what I'm saying, the designer, but it's called Plush Posh. And I'm going to drop the Instagram in the description. Make sure you guys subscribe. Guys, you can come. Girls, I'll be carrying your clothes, but guys, I need y'all's help and support too. Um, again, this robe is available, small, medium, and large. Let me slide my ring light back so maybe y'all can see how long it is. It's pretty long. All right, y'all, we'll have to slide the camera back. But I am wearing a small, of course, um, I like to wear robes when I'm getting like ready for if I have a show or something or if I'm just at a hotel chilling. I love to wear robes and I like to constantly manifest what I want and what I like. So I think this is a great way, but I will see you guys on the next video game.